Hey there folks, John here from Biddy Kong's Quest, and true to my word, I'm gonna try to be better about uploading videos this year. Um, I uploaded a video about a week ago uh, and just talked about kind of some of my collecting habits and uh, kind of just channel update, but today I wanted to go ahead and upload because I was really surprised through a couple of conversations on Twitter and some other things, how few people had actually really given one of my favorite games that I mentioned a chance. And that game was Blast Corps. Now this is obviously not the American version of Blast Corps. This is the Japanese one, and the reason why is because that's what I picked up the last time um, and showed off in that video. But I did say that Blast Corps is my favorite N64 game, hands down. Uh, and I ran into a couple of people that were like, wow, really, it's, it's that one? Like, this is the one of all of them? And I'm a huge Banjo-Kazooie fan. Uh, huge uh, GoldenEye fan, loved all those N64 games, right? But but this is the one for me, and I, and I, I wasn't kidding. Um, and a bunch of people were really surprised about that. So I wanted to make a video, uh, however short or long it ends up being, about Blast Corps, one of my absolute favorite games of all time. And here is my childhood copy of it. This is the American one. This is what it looks like in America. It's also back there on the screen. Um, and yeah, it's a game worth making a video about, and not nearly enough people talk about it. So, here we go. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit more of a video with just with some of my thoughts, a little bit less like some of my history videos, but we'll still have some, some footage and stuff like that in here. Uh, first of all, let's talk about Blast Corps and what it, uh, really what it is. And basically, this is a game with a completely nonsensical, ridiculous plot. Uh, it's actually made by Rare, uh, like Rare who made, again, Banjo-Kazooie, mentioned that before, GoldenEye, all those other things, pretty much all of the no, maybe not all, but a lot of the really, really like top tier great N64 games uh, made by Rare, Rareware. Um, and this is before they were bought by Microsoft and uh, changed what they do. I don't want to insult anybody that's a fan of Rare's current day work, um, but I'm not nearly as big of a fan of what they do right now as I was back in this era. Um, and this is actually one of the very first games they released on the N64. It might have been the first. I'm not sure. I probably should have looked that up. Uh, I'll put up whatever the, the year is on the uh, on the screen right now, just so you guys can see. But this was an early game, and I, I remember uh, this was one of the very first games that I rented, maybe the first game that I rented for my N64, because uh, I, I got it for Christmas. I got Mario 64. I think maybe I got Wave Race. Uh, and I remember falling in love with this game very soon after that. So uh, it's an early release for the N64. Uh, it was made in 1997. Uh, I just read the back of the box. Um, and it is a really kind of weird game uh, that has a lot of humor, a lot of blowing stuff up, and just kind of a character that I haven't seen in any other game since. Now the premise of Blast Corps is that you are a group of construction people, like a construction company, uh, that is given the task of saving the world from nuclear obliteration, uh, which is ridiculous in and of itself. Um, now how do you do that? Well, it turns out there is a nuclear carrier, like a truck, with two nuclear warheads on it, and the, uh, there's some kind of malfunction and it goes on autopilot. And for some reason, they program the autopilot to literally go in a straight line to the detonation site, which is like across the country. If it runs into any bumps, if it hits anything, uh, it will explode. And the world ends. It's a nuclear winter for everybody in America. So uh, they hired the Blast Corps with their assortment of bulldozers and, uh, and dump trucks and weird like RC cars and robots and all kinds of other stuff uh, to literally destroy everything in this carrier's path. It's buildings, it's uh, you know water towers, it's pretty much everything you can imagine, factories, those sorts of things and you just blow stuff up, and that is literally the whole thing. Now, that sounds really simple, uh, and it is, but one of the other cool things about Blast Corps is it has all these little different uh, mini-game segments, and this is kind of from an era of 
uh, game design, which I feel like we don't really do a whole lot anymore, where they would get a core gameplay, gameplay loop or, or a core gameplay mechanic down, and then they would use that for the, the main game, which is destroying all the stuff. But then they would also use the same physics and the same everything else to do a bunch of other things with them. So it's not just about blowing everything up. It's also uh, about these little side missions where there's some where you're racing, like literally like it was almost like uh, Micro Machines, if you've ever played Micro Machines uh, on like the Genesis or the NES. Uh, or there's ones where you're like literally inside of a Pac-Man maze with the dump truck and you've got to go around and get all the get all the things before all the bad dump trucks, which are ghosts, come and get you. There's half pipe things uh, with the with the like the remote control car thing. There's all these different extra levels and, and there's even more past the, the final level in the game, which I won't spoil. Um, and the game just keeps on going and keeps giving you all these extra challenges. And there's just so, 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 so much replay value, which I really feel like that's something we've lost now. Like there's very few games that just have like uh, this thing where they have a really, really solid core gameplay mechanic and then they just decide, yeah, we're gonna do like a million things with that thing. Um, and that's one of the things that Rare was just great at. If you've ever played uh, any even of the, the classic Rare platformers like Banjo-Kazooie or uh, uh, Donkey Kong 64 or um, even something like Jet Force Gemini, which is not really a, a platformer, there's always these little mini games that are kind of peppered in, in and through uh, the games. And I miss that. Like, that was really cool that they used to do that. Um, and I really wish that, that companies would do it again. But anyways, um, that's enough of me gushing uh, about Blastcore and, and how much I like it, but that's what the game's about. Uh, the music is memorable. Um, you guys know I always talk about my game music uh, in all of my videos. Uh, it's not probably the best rare music ever, but it's definitely memorable. There's this really catchy little jingle thing that plays on the level select screen that's actually really good. Sound design is good, um, you know, not amazing, not stellar, but it's just a fun package, especially since the the premise is so ridiculous. Um, and it's just classic rare, it just feels great. Um, one of the best things too about this game is that it's actually not that expensive. You can actually pick up a copy of Blast Corps for probably 10 bucks uh, on the N64 at a convention, or even if you, if you want to do it online. Um, it's a pretty common game and one that just gets overlooked. Uh, and I'm, I'm not really sure why, because it is just so much fun. Now, part of, the, of what I'm gonna do uh, in these videos where I'm just kind of going over some of my favorite games, again, they're a little bit less formal. Um, a lot of these things I own physically. So whenever I own a, own a game physically, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open it too and uh, let you guys see uh, what's in the package. Because this is my childhood copy. It has everything that it came with. Um, I think it still has the inserts and stuff, but I know I've got the manual and everything in here. Um, and I set up a new workbench area uh, with a new camera and stuff like that so that we can actually do some unboxing type stuff um, and make it a little bit easier. Uh, if you've seen my um, how to do your own retro game boxes or like my play date unboxing or stuff like that, it's, it's that kind of setup but it's a little bit more polished, the lighting's a little better, that kind of thing. So we're gonna go over there um, and I'll show you guys what would have come with it if you bought this game in 1997. Okay, so this is Blastcore. As you can see, um, now the uh, the Japanese one that I got uh, that kind of started this whole thing is right here. Um, this one also, if you guys want, I can unbox this too, uh, but I kind of did that on camera already, so it's not gonna be this video. We're gonna talk about the American version of Blast Core, and like I said, this is actually my childhood version of the game. Uh, you can see it's been well-loved. Uh, I used to put, literally take my games to friends' houses in boxes, uh, in their actual box, I, I always kept them which in retrospect uh, is a, was a really bad idea, but hey, I was like 12 or 13 or something, didn't always make the best decisions. But you can see um, it's got a little bit of shelf wear to it. Uh, you can see a little crease right there. Um, you can get a, uh, a little uh, dent right there and everything. Now, I do keep um, all of my games in uh, boxes of like um, plastic con uh, protectors now, um, and I have for years, but again, uh, I was 13, 14, whatever it was that I was, and didn't take the best care of my stuff, although I did keep everything. Um, I just used this as protection for the game when I really should have just been protecting the box. Anyways, so let's go and open this up. So this is what it looks like. Oh, before we do that, there's the back. 
That's what it looks like. Um, all N64 games uh, back in the day in America had this kind of kind of layout, kind of format. You have, usually had the logo, and then you had um, a little summary, and then some uh, some stuff that um, like stuff about the game that was like cool or interesting or whatever, and then just screenshots. So um, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see the screenshots there. My camera will focus. Yeah. So something like that. So that's what it what it used to look like, um, and that's what the back of Blast Core looks like. So. Uh, you know, you can also look up the box art online. It's very easy to find if you want. But here's the game. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and open this up. Now, they, this is an early N64 game, so it comes with this, uh, it co they come in this carton that kind of has these weird, like, side flaps. Look, there's the manual. It's, it's got this really, like, um, complex looking, like, folded cardboard design. Later ones would have ones that are much more simplified than this, but this is what they came with. These are actually pretty hard to find uh, if, if the person lost them or didn't take care of them. Um, this is the cartridge itself. Uh, you know, obviously in the 64 cartridges, they have the back label, they have the front label. Uh, the front label actually is, is fine. Uh, some N64 labels uh, are kind of junk. Um, I kind of like this one. Uh, it's just got uh, the robot, which is called the J-Bomb, on it, and then a gigantic explosion. So giant robot, giant explosion. Uh, that's all you need to know, right? That's what we're, what we're playing here. Um, and then lastly, you've got the manual. Now this manual obviously is very well used, very well loved. Um, you can see all the creases in it if I, if I kind of do this, so you can see. Um, I used to take out my, my manuals and actually use them as reading material. I'm sure that a lot of us used to do that. I was a nerd. Um, and it's very well loved. Most of my manuals are, and I like it that way. I like stuff with a story. Originally, I think this was a rental, um, and I believe uh, that I got the rental sticker off the back of it, which now I regret. I usually keep rental stickers on now. Um, but, you know, so that's what that was. I'm sure that I, I, I tore the rental sticker off of the manual, which was a bad idea. But um, that's what the manual looks like. So you've got table of contents. We're not going to go through all the pages here, but a lot of times manuals would have some really, exclu really cool exclusive artwork like this. Um, this is obviously what they took the, uh, the, the cover of the game from. So, like, you can see the cover of the game is like this building and the backlash and the J-bomb and then the, the nuclear missile truck. And you can see that that's kind of this part of the uh, the art, but usually a lot of times in the manuals, let me do this so you guys don't get the glare, you can see a lot more of like the full art that would have been on the box um, in the manual, which is cool. So you've got a cool story. Um, it's basically the thing that I summarized earlier. Uh, and you've got to get the missiles to the end. The thing that I also didn't mention, you've got to find scientists, that's what this little guy is, so that they can defuse the bombs once they actually get to the detonation site. Um, and so that's kind of what, what's going on here. Uh, let's see if there's any cool pages. So you uh, you got pages that show you um, what the different vehicles are. Again, you used to have to actually look in a manual to see how to control everything, it's because these uh, we didn't do have a, as many tutorial things as we do now. Um, and so like you actually had the different controls for every vehicle. So these are some of the vehicles that are in the game. Um, this is one of the robots, that's the Thunder Fist. Um, this is the J-Bomb, that's the one that I, that I was talking about. Uh, and then this one's called the Cyclone Suit. Didn't remember what that one was called. Um, and then you have the, the motorcycle with the, with the rocket, rocket launchers, the ballista. And then the side swipe, this thing sucks. It's really hard to use. Um, it doesn't work real well. And then again, uh, I, I mentioned that it's kind of, it has these racing sequences that are kind of like micro machines. Um, these are, it even tells you the different cars that you get, which is pretty sick. Now, it would actually also, um, in manuals, a lot of times it would show pictures of things that you would actually end up having to unlock that you wouldn't get from the outset and you wouldn't even know we're, we're, know we're there until you looked in the manual. Um, but they wouldn't tell you how to unlock them. So like this one, for instance, is the one that you gotta find in like a really obscure place in a level. Um, and then you can use it in all the other levels. But you would never know it exists unless you see it in the manual. You're like, huh, I, I haven't found that thing yet. Um, so there's, even, even it shows you how to drive trains and cranes, which are not obviously destruction vehicles. Um, and then it kind of just tells you about the world map and then has warnings and, and um, that's it. That's the manual. So uh, that is what Blast Core came with. It's just the, zoom out here. So it's just the box and the manual and the game. Um, you know, it also would have come with some of the, uh, the little like Nintendo warning things, um, you know, or ads for other games or whatever. Uh, that stuff, obviously, that I didn't keep um, for whatever reason with this. Some of, them I, some, some of my games I have it, some of them I don't. But that's what it looks like, that's, that's Blast Core. Uh, so if you were to buy it in um, 1997, that's what you would have got.
And again, I really miss manuals. They're very, very cool. So anyways, that's what it looks like. We're gonna go head back to the chair and wrap this thing up. All right, and so that was Blast Core. And you know, I think it, it it's probably should be said too, I'm not saying that this is like the best N64 game. Like this is like 10 out of 10 or 11 out of 10 or whatever. You have to buy this game because it's the best one. Uh, anytime I give a recommendation like this, I'm, I'm really just saying, hey, I love this game. Like this is one that I love, uh, you know, and that's for nostalgic reasons. Um, it's because I like the gameplay, I like the art, I like the music, I like whatever it is I like about it, which for this one happens to be pretty much everything. Um, and I, it, it's, it's a great game, right? Because this is uh, uh, one that I, I have played a ton of my life and I will continue to play a ton of my life um, because I love it. And so that is Blast Core. And I just wanted to share it with all of you guys. Uh, now, if you like this kind of video, these are kind of impromptu. Um, there's not a lot of research that goes into it. Uh, you know, it's not one of my bigger videos and stuff like that. It's just talking about something that I love. So if you like it, go ahead and let me know down in the comments. I've wanted to feature this game uh, in a video for like years, um, especially uh, like one of my like big history videos and, and those kinds of things. But the problem is, I, I don't know that there's that much of a story to this. I've actually looked it up. Um, I've tried to ch tried to find enough to fill a whole script. I, I just don't think it really exists with this one. Um, at least not, not at the level of the research that I usually do for those. So it was one of those things where I, I couldn't really make a video uh, all about this unless, um, you know, I just made it part of like a larger video on like rare games for N64, like rareware um, or something like that, which now that I say that, that's actually probably a pretty good idea for, a, for a, um, like a history research video. But I still wanted to talk about it because I absolutely love Blastcore and I think it's, it, it needs to be talked about. Nobody really talks about this game. Um, and I wish that they would talk about it more and more and people need to play it. So that's about it for this video. Um, obviously I have a great love for this game, I bought it twice, uh, and I really hope that you will check it out too. Now, uh, hopefully I can do some more of these videos and, uh, hopefully I'll be back next week with, with something similar. I've already got an idea, uh, for something I'm going to do. But until that time, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.